What's up my dear friends of the world, Paul the Trombone is here and in this video I want to share with you on how to play the blues on the trombone, how to do this if you're a beginner and you can start making some music and get going. We're going to do this in the key of B flat and there's really only three chords in this particular blues progression. It's 12 measures long, it's called the 12 bar blues and we want to start simple here. So before we even get into what the harmony is called, there's only three fundamental notes I want you to know. Let's keep it simple. B flat, E flat, and F. That's it. Later on I will explain that those are coming from the dominant chords, B flat dominant, E flat dominant, and F dominant. But right now, let's not think about that. Let's just think about the roots. The roots is the first note of the harmony. It's the fundamental pitch. It's what the bass player plays. Let's just think about that so we can get the form. And all we want to do is we want to understand the form because everything's going to build on it like a house, like you're building the foundation of a house. So if we don't know this, we're going to get confused later. So let's start this. Let's start with this. And we're going to do it in quarter notes. And this is the form. So you know how it goes. It's 12 measures long. And it's going to go B flat, E flat, F. Okay? Listen to this. That's the form. Now you can feel it. That's one aspect of playing a single line instrument that doesn't play harmony like a horn, a trombone, trumpet, saxophone, is we kind of have to get more comfortable with the form compared to chordal instruments because they, they always know the form. They got the harmony and everything. So we need to visualize that. And the way I like to visualize it is just play the roots simply like that. Do that over and over on repeat. When you play over the blues, you're not going to really do that so much. It's going to be the bass player and the harmony is going to be from other instruments. But we need to understand that so we can become a crucial part of the ensemble and have a nice foundation like those instruments do. Okay, so once that's cool, all we got to do now is understand what other notes are in the chord. So we got three chords here. So on the B flat dominant, aka B flat 7. We got B flat, D, F, and A flat. So, repeat this, look back, you can look, that's what's cool about these videos is you can go back and see what I did there, slow it down. And then the next one is the E flat 7. E flat, G, B flat, D flat. Okay, so let's go back to the first one, the B flat 7. B flat D F A flat one four one three that's what we're doing one four one three now we're on E flat seven again three four one two and then let's go back to B flat now I won't even go into F7 yet. Let's get those two comfortable. So what I would do is I just loop those two over and over again. And it's already starting to sound like the blues, okay? starting to get there. Now once that's cool, let's add the F dominant, F7. F, A, C, E flat. First, second, third, third. Then we're going to go back to the four chord, which is the E flat 7. And that back to the one chord, which is the B flat 7. 
So now you're really starting to feel the harmony. So once you're at this stage, you can start to play the form with those notes. So it takes some time, but I'm telling you, once you put the work into it, you remember your muscles remember it for the rest of your life and you just keep building it on it like a, a home. And then as you'll discover, once you get like the strong foundation of the form and the chord tones, you start to add different tools in your arsenal to play over the blues to, you know, get more dimension into your playing. So it's pretty cool. So the next step is you're going to just do that in time. <laughs> That's it. Now you're starting to play the blues. And if you do that a hundred times, you're always going to know what chord is going on at what time in the blues because you're going to hear that over and over in your brain, that form, so you're not going to get lost. And if you just played the notes in the harmony, it sounds like the blues. So check this out. Let's not even, let's not even think about playing the arpeggio. I'm just going to play certain notes in the chord, but check it out. All I was doing was playing the notes in the chord tones for the corresponding chord. Now what made it sound a little more sophisticated was I was finding the half step relationships between the chord tone to chord tone at the corresponding harmony. So this is what makes a musician sound more mature. So you don't have to play a ton of notes. You can just understand that when you play the chord tones of the corresponding chord at the right time and navigate through these half-step relationships, it's going to have more musicality in your playing. Have you ever been in a situation where someone was like, oh, you can play these, these notes over these chords, and you go to play and it doesn't sound quite like you heard other people playing it. You're like, what's different about me? Why doesn't it sound like that? And the reason is because it's not the notes that work over the chords. It's using the right notes at the right time over the corresponding chords. And it's those chord tones, landing on the chord tones and finding those half-step relationships. So it's like connecting the dots and like it's like playing a smooth line. But it's not really a line. It's more like this. <laughs> they call it a line, but it's actually like this. That's what a line really means in this context. So we do that, and you just memorize a path. So you find one path that works for you, and you memorize it. And then what happens is once you memorize that one path, you can pull that path out of your back pocket and embellish it over time. So that's why musicians transcribe certain solos is because you internalize that path, and then you embellish it. So there's no such thing as like making music out of thin air. What happens with all the greats that you hear is they just transcribe, internalize paths, and then they, over time, embellish it. Just like when you learn how to speak your language, you memorize the path, you listen to the people that taught you English, or the, whatever language you're watching, it's got to be English because I'm speaking English, and then you embellish it to communicate your own style. But you had to absorb specific ways of communicating from other people first. It's the same. So check it out. So you find a path. I'll give you one path right now. There's one path. Now you can get off and running just with that. 
And just with that, you can start feeling really good about it. And over time, it just gets better and better and better. Now, you may have heard of something called the blue scale. Well, now we can add the little blue scale to it and get a little more flavor over it. So some people will say, learn this blue scale and you can play any note over it and it's going to work. The reason I'm sharing with you this first, because if you start with the foundation, like I'm talking like first, and then you add the blue scale after it, watch what happens to how your playing sounds. It's going to start to sound more magical. And the blue scale is simple. It's, we're doing B flat blues here. B flat, D flat. E flat, E, A flat, B flat. Okay, that's the scale. Know the arpeggios inside the harmony. Already like that, it's starting to sound fun, right? Then know the half step relationships between when the harmony changes. Now play the notes in the arpeggios, but keep in mind that half step relationships when the guide, those are called guide tones, when they change. Then play the blue scale and then add that in to taste and to flavor. There we go. That should get you going. Now, even though this video is kind of short, there's a lot in it that you can repeat and work on and work on and work on. Work with a metronome, get the feel, get the form. And if you found any value in this whatsoever, all I ask for is a subscribe and a like. I'm on a goal to get to 100,000 subscribers. It's one of my lifelong dreams. And I appreciate you all tremendously. Leave a comment, let me know where you're from, what your thoughts are, any questions you have. And I will try to respond the best I can. Appreciate you all very much. Paul Trombonis signing off. Mm -hmm.